am Liz Wright. Welcome to Live Your Best Life. The only thing that matters now is living by the power of this wonderful new creation life. We're going to become an undefeatable force of radiating glory, and we are rising up strong now in this hour. Hi, family all around the world. Thank you for joining us for today's extremely special episode of Live Your Best Life with, of course, me, Liz Wright. And my conversation today, I am so excited about because I have been reading my special guest book, her new book that's um, been highly anticipated. It's actually called The Lifestyle of a Happy Prophet, which is an amazing title, but it's just, it's so beautifully written and it's just all about, you'll hear more in a moment, but it's just all about living that authentic, connected life, really learning, knowing how to hear God and experience him and walk in a deep, intimate way with Father Jesus and Holy Spirit. Honestly, it's just beautiful. It's full of transformational keys. So she's the author of this amazing new book that I'm recommending to all of you to read. She's also a very loved and recognized international prophet of the Lord's heart. She's one of those rare breeds that really, really knows the Lord's heart and then begins to communicate from that place of real connection. So it is my joy. I'm so excited to welcome into the conversation with me today, Sarah Cheeseman. Sarah, welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Liz. Wow, what an introduction. I'm overwhelmed, <laughs> but it's it's just such a joy and a privilege to be with you and to be with your beautiful family listening. Thanks so much. Oh. Hi, everyone. Oh, thank you. And thank you for getting up so early in Australia as well. We so appreciate it. We so appreciate it. I'm excited about the conversation, Sarah, because I know you're, you're the real deal. I mean, you walk the walk and your book, the content of it is just flowing from your relationship over your whole life, right? Because I know you've been walking with Jesus your whole life. So I wanted to dive into the conversation and just ask you, um, where it changed for you because obviously you've known the Lord all your life you've grown up in a Christian home you were so privileged to have a beautiful mm. Christian family but something happened to you I was reading it actually in your book and you, I was laughing because you said you'd gone from like literally bursting blood vessels in prayer <laughs> like you know like we do stressing out trying to have a relationship with the Lord to s- something happening to you and everything changing and you just being a blubbering wreck on the floor in tears experiencing the Lord's heart and his love for you and then your life was completely different so can we start there what happened to you (laughs) yes oh I love to start there it's my favorite place I call it I call it my great awakening it really was Liz um I as you mentioned grew up in a Christian home and and I got to a stage at 20 years old when I realized I knew the Lord but I didn't know him in, in ways that moved me and changed me. And I was burnt out on religion and I had done all the works and been the good girl and done everything right. But at the end of the day, felt powerless and, and void of, of knowing in a, in a real way that he's great love for me beyond an intellectual understanding. And, and I just, because everyone knows that God loves them, right? But there's something about when we let our let the spirit bypass our minds and go straight to our heart that just transforms us. So that's what I did one night before the Lord, my parents' home. And, and I just positioned myself in, in prayer while reading someone else's book. <laughs> and, um, and as I did, I, I just heard the Lord begin to sing over me. And he said these words, I still remember it. And it obviously still moves me. Um, you are my beloved daughter. I am well pleased. You can have all of me. And in that moment, I just realized that, wow, this great, magnificent God, creator of heaven and earth, you know, where nations and suns and moons move at his breath is so well acquainted and wants to know me intimately. And I think in that moment, it was like the eyes of my heart were enlightened. Mm -hmm. And like you said, I went from bursting blood vessels in prayer to being a blubbering mess on the floor. And I just encountered the Holy Spirit, encountered the Holy Spirit. And his love transformed me um, better than any (laughs) anything else that I had done or tried. I'd love the Lord and I'd served him. And they were all wonderful things. I I I genuinely know that I I pleased his heart and and I love the Holy Spirit, but there was something that actually transformed the way I operated and interacted with who God is from that point. Yeah. 
it's so powerful what you're sharing. And I loved it that where you began to talk then about the, the foundation of everything before we do anything, particularly before we prophesy, it has to be on that foundation that you experienced of love, you know, and that this, that where you're teaching, you do prophetic schools and all that you're involved with as a prophetic leader. Mm -hmm. That's the foundation that you teach. Right. And I just thought that's amazing because it, it, it brings a purity an authenticity and a purity and a safety to prophet to, to the prophetic, right. And to everything that we do, because then we're not performance driven. We're not trying to get needs met in any other way other than, knowing our core value because of our relationship and the love we're experiencing right yes that's right and I love first corinthians 13 Paul just you're probably familiar with it those listening are probably familiar with the scripture he just lays out love so magnificently for us and then in chapter 14 1 the very next verse you know it says pursue love or follow the way of love and eagerly desire the spiritual gifts especially that you would prophesy and so like you rightly say, Liz, then the foundation for us to prophesy is out, birthed out of the place of the love of God, built on the foundation of love for people. And yeah. so I'm not prophesying over you because I'm trying to gain something for myself. I'm trying to make myself look good or impress you with the gift of the Holy Spirit. My motivation is to love you and to represent him well. And so the more, the better acquainted I am with him in intimacy and in love, the better I can love you because I know him well. And so then when I prophesy, that's the filter I'm prophesying through is his great love for, for you. Yeah. Oh, honestly, it's just, it, it changes everything, doesn't it? It changes everything. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's one of the things that I pray all the time for, for myself and for the whole body of Christ, you know, that we would live rooted and grounded and established in this hour in his love and everything we would be compelled by love and like you just said you know we'd be an expression of the overflow of his heart in every interaction and the motivation of everything we do would be the that people would experience his love and know how loved they are and know their value and live from that place of liberation you know and it's it's transforming isn't it it's just amazing there was something else that you shared and i thought oh that so reminds me of paul's teachings where you said you got to a point where you knew and you continually live like this, your absolute dependency on him, you mm. need him for everything. And it's like that in that place of surrender and weakness, you've discovered that actually that's the place where we begin to experience his joy as our strength, you know, and his love as the, tr as the true essence of our being as well. You know, and I just, oh yeah, it's like, um, where Paul says, you know, that I'm not afraid of my weaknesses, I'm paraphrasing, obviously, but I'm not afraid of my weaknesses. But here, I've discovered that they are a portal through which I experience the power of God coming into my life, you know, wow. and it's like, isn't it amazing? So can you can you unpack that a bit more for us? Because I think that's a massive, massive key for people's lives. If we can, if we can step away from being afraid of weakness and realize actually, mm -hmm. this is the place of encounter. <laughs> you know? yes. This is the kingdom. It's so different. Yes. I mean, you've laid it out beautifully, Liz, but even James chapter one, and I'm paraphrasing here, but count it all joy when you experience trials when the testing of your faith and produces character in you. And, and there's, I was speaking with one of my interns yesterday and he was talking about this trial he went through and he had been walking through and he said, um, oh, I mean, not that you want them. And I said, no, James, one, count it all joy. What a privilege this is for me to steward my heart, to come into a, a place and surrender before the Lord. And instead of allowing the situation to make me bitter, lean in, allow the Lord to do his transforming work in my heart to make me better, make allow myself to be dependent on you today for everything that I need for my strength, for my joy, for my wisdom, for my hope. I'm so vital, especially in these days, because I think we can kind of coast on what we know and what we've experienced and how things are going. But when you get to the end of yourself, um, that's the best place for you. Like, happy day for you. Hooray. Like, <laughs> this is where you have arrived. This is actually where we're to position ourselves every day. As Paul said, I die daily. Like, I actually, like, I'm desperate for you in, in a way where I've recognized not only does nothing else satisfy, but I, 
in you, I live and move and have my being and I'm not called to live any other way. And I feel like it's at that place of absolute surrender, total dependency where we go, God, I actually need you today. Um, I've got three little ones and I need him. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Like I need him I, in, in ways I haven't needed him before. And I, and I love that place of, of, of de- it's, it's a, for me, it's a desperation. I'm desperate for him. Um, and I acknowledge that his ways are higher. His ways are better. And so each day through surrender, I actually come into alignment with what the spirit would is, is doing, how he's operating that day and allowing him to empower me for, for everyday living, not just for having a conversation with Liz, although that's really powerful and, and wonderful, um, but p- for parenting, for, mm. for being a great wife, for loving mm. my parents well, um, for, for being a, a good leader, all those things. Nothing's outside of the gospel. Nothing falls outside of the kingdom. When we've submitted our lives to him, we actually have the power to infuse everything we touch with it. Um, and so I think that place of surrender, recognizing I want to be the, like the man in Matthew 14 who built his house on the rock. Yeah. Everything else is sinking sand. And so that becomes my anchor point. The word, what he said, what, who he says I am, that's where I live from. And everything else is subject to that. It's not the other way around. Um, and so, and so I think um, in, in that way, when we've made it, I think there's something about Liz I'm going on now, but I think there's something. No, it's about, brilliant. Keep going. You're in a flow. It's very powerful. <laughs> I think there's something about when you become convicted of who he says you are and of who he is, you refuse to move. Um, and it's like that territory, like I just talked about the man who built his house on the rock. It's like, you know, this is my place. This is my domain. This is my territory. This is my land. This is the ownership of revelation that you've given me, that I'm stewarding from you. And I refuse to move despite what I see. I'm not, Smith Wigglesworth said, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm only moved by what I believe. And so I love to take up that same position of like, whatever's going on, I'm not moved by that. I'm moved by what I believe. I'm moved by the foundation of the cross, the foundation of your love and the blood of Jesus. And I don't move on from that. That's the overflow that I live out of. That's the firm foundation that everything else is then built upon. It's just, it's so, uh, I can feel there's a, as you're speaking, people shifting I'm sure you guys are feeling this shift there's such a grace right now I I feel it I'm sure you do as well to and you have language for it and a presence on you about it because you're living it Uh, to call us back to the pure gospel experience that the early church knew step by step I believe the in this hour the Lord's taking us back to that to where what you just said then we literally do the word you know, we don't mm. move from that position. We, we, it, it's, it will break deception from our hearts when it, this, this way of living, if we will just allow Holy Spirit to be God in our lives and we don't just hear the word, but be do the word, yes. we do the gospel. We set, we dare to believe him, to just believe him and come out of unbelief. It's like um, the, the deceptions that we've believed, the lies that we've believed about the father, about God the the Lord is moving that out of our hearts now if we will just surrender and dare to believe him and let the promises cascade into our life through faith as we Mm. just open our hearts right and we just go no I like you said I will believe I will believe who you say I am and then if I don't believe Lord Holy Spirit breathe on me and bring Mm. that truth alive in my heart so that I live the fullness of the gospel of the kingdom, the fullness of your intention for my life. It's just, it's so powerful how you speak. And I know you do this. You take, you take people through that process, don't you? Where, um, I guess I know you share it in your book about coming out of the lies, the impact of the lies that we've believed sometimes for our whole lives about God that has prohibited us from having an intimate connection with him and to be able to, to see rightly. Yes. Will, you, yeah. will you will you share with us a little bit about where how what that looks like how you will lead people out of the lies and deeper into this ability to walk the pure gospel walk yes of course so so the word says um if you continue in my word you are truly my disciples then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free mm. and so it's not just 
the, the truth is powerful and it's freedom, but it's not just the truth that sets us free. It's knowing the truth that sets us free. And there's something about continuing in the word of God that transforms us, transforms the way we think and brings us into freedom. And so the, the best way to set your, be set free from the lies and have your mind transformed is by the washing of the water that comes through the word. It's like daily, you know, multiple times a day, um, three meals and snacks, you know, constantly mm-hmm. feeding on the word of God, um, allowing the truth to transform you because that's what sets you free. The eyes of your heart being enlightened. And, and, and if you think God is an angry kid on an ant, he'll ready to smite you. Um, that's the filter that you'll prophesy through. That's also the filter you'll hear him speak to you through, um, which means that you did good, but it wasn't good enough. And um, you got that right, but you didn't quite get that right. And oh, be careful there. And maybe if you get that right, then maybe you'll walk into your destiny. Like I have this for you, but it's conditional. That's not who he is um, at all. And that's not that's not true. Um, the, the truth is that he is entirely for you. If God is for you, who can be against you? He's on your silence. He's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It's his good pleasure to prosper you and give you a, a hope and a future, according to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 29, 11. I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with that. Uh, but when um, you hold truth as a mirror, not a measure, the Bible is a mirror. It's not a measure, a mirror of who you're actually called to be. When you hold up that truth towards you very quick and you measure your thought patterns and belief systems according to that mirror, you hold it up in the light of that mirror, very quickly you see like, well, hang on. That's not, that doesn't line up with who the father says that I am. And who are you? Oh, okay, Liz, we're going to, this is about to get really good. Yeah, it's amazing stuff. Keep going. <laughs> Jesus said to even to Philip, Philip, if you've, he, Philip said, show us the father. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. Colossians says that Jesus is the visible image of an invisible God. That is when we look at the life of Jesus, we can say, oh, that's who the father is. I see who you are because God expressed Emmanuel, God with us. If you want to know who God is, look at the life of the son. Look at the life of Jesus, the visible, the expressed image. Colossians 3 says of the invisible God that means if I don't see it in the life of the son I can't call it the father and in the life of the son I never saw him tell somebody it is better for you to remain in your affliction it is better for you to remain downcast and in despair I never saw him say to a person oh that what's happening for you that's actually to teach you a lesson I never see that in the life of Jesus in the word the mirror Right. How right. we're called to live, the mirror of who the Father is, right? Huh. And mm-hmm. so in your own mm-hmm. life, if you can't see what you're believing expressed in the life of the Son, who is the visible image of the invisible God, it's not from the Father. It's not true about who you are. And so then you can actively, actively reject it, utterly yeah. reject it. It's like the word of God. Anything that is added or subtracted to the Bible should be utterly rejected. We believe the whole Bible, right? And so if you look at the word then and you say, (laughs) sorry, I'm getting getting myself excited with this. I'll try and I get fast. We have exactly the same passion. I love it every second of it. (laughs) I can feel people getting set free from religious bondage right now. So yes. Hooray, praise God. And so, um, so then rather, right, here we go. So then we, if I'm believing something that I know isn't, isn't true, or I'm, I don't currently know it's not true, but I'm lifted and I put it beside the word and I, put, and I put it beside the life of Jesus Christ. And when I don't see it in Jesus, see it in Jesus, I just go, that's not who I am. And I cast down every thought, like the word says, and I replace it with the truth. I take every thought captive. And I said, that is contrary to the word of God, contrary to the knowledge of Christ. And I invite the Holy Spirit to come and replace it with the truth of who he says I am. I might have to do that multiple times a day. That's okay. It's a fight. There's a fight of faith as you take that ground until it's naturally the way that you walk. It's naturally the way that you believe. Then you've default right um bill johnson says um when the impossible seems logical you know your mind's being renewed and so i feel like when when truth becomes your default when you respond certain ways when you used to respond another way when you respond in something bad happened oh i thank you lord that you love me and you're going to make all things work together for my good as opposed to 
something bad happened. I must have done something wrong. Who sinned, right? As the, the parents of the, the blind boy did. And Jesus went, oh, no one sinned. This is to, for my glory. This is for my good work to be revealed, right? And so when I default to, oh, this is for a good work to be revealed, then I know my mind's been renewed into the truth of who he is. Ah, so powerful. Oh my goodness. So every, okay. So tell me, well, there's so many ways I want to go with you. This <laughs> We could talk for about five hours. I hours. think we probably could. <laughs> it's so powerful. Oh my goodness. Everything you're sharing. So, so this is how I live as well. It's literally like moment by moment. And it's like you you, sometimes you have to choose it as a discipline don't you and be, and be until it becomes passionate and alive in you and connected and you realize transformations taking place you know I love the scripture I've quoted it lots of times on the show it's one of my my life verses is Ephesians 4 23 and 24 we are we are changed by every unfolding revelation we are transformed as we embrace, you know, it, the glorious Christ within and live in union with him. And so that life of abiding, holy, (laughs) waves of Holy Spirit moving then, wow, the life of abiding and just, just mm, abiding creates fruitfulness, doesn't it? And just meditating on the word. And that as soon as that revelation hits your heart, like you say, you know, as you're turning into the truth and you're refusing the lies, the moment, and obviously I I encourage you to do this right now, guys, actually, I'm going to ask you to lead us into a, a time of prayer if you would, but it's more than prayer. It's activating a moment of encounter. We're coming in agreement with you that whatever lie you are um, struggling with right now that as you turn again into the in the opposite spirit to the truth you begin to with your heart open right you're embracing the glorious Christ within the truth the truth will come into your heart I mean I live this as you do I live it like literally day by day moment by moment you know sometimes I have to really discipline myself to do it other times it's just like natural you know supernaturally natural but um, can I ask you would you would you go there with us with the people that are struggling particularly with with lies you know that are just affecting your lives your hearts right now to just get us back into Jesus and freedom mm. oh yes I'd love to <laughs> yeah, absolutely and you're right Liz it's a, it's a discipline until it becomes a delight and, until a um, delight yes yeah yes. and and there's seasons of that of, of course but I, I would love to pray yeah. love to pray for for you listening and Jesus Christ is freedom. So you just let truth and freedom loose and it does its work. And so he's going to do his work in you today. So Father, I thank you for everyone listening or watching. Father, I thank you. Wow, that Jesus Christ, that you are abundant life, you are abundant hope, you're abundant truth and freedom. And I speak to each one listening today. And in Jesus' name, we just silence every lie of the enemy. Lord, any lie that would cause them to live in fear, any lie that would cause them to feel fear, sorry, live in bondage. Actually see um, what looks like some of you, it, it feels like you get, you've get you been going through this maze and right when you come into the exit point, it's like you get trapped again and you, you feel like you're starting again from the beginning. And I feel like there's been um, people, you've desired so much to be free and right at your point of freedom, it's like the enemy has come and tried to bring you back in um, to that place of captivity in your mind. And so in Jesus' name, we set your mind free today. We set you loose. We set you free to know the way, the truth, and the life. God, I thank you for absolute freedom. And again, any um, assignment of the enemy, Lord, we just break its power right now in Jesus' name. And we release a way through. We release a way through. And I thank you. It's a way through to freedom in Jesus' name. I thank you that, Lord, that they will know the truth as they continue in your word and it will set them free. Lord, I break any spirit of heaviness right now in Jesus' name. Any lie that says even now that you need to remain here, that you need to live here. And in Jesus' name, we say we are going to higher ground. We are going to higher ground. I thank you, Lord. We are moving into a new territory today in Jesus' name. And we plant 
a, a flag of truth on that mountaintop today in Jesus name Lord we take ground in the spirit where you would have us go and we refuse to move from freedom and I thank you Lord that you are teaching us today Lord how to renew our mind that you're teaching us Lord how to pull down those lies and replace it with the truth Lord and even as they do I ask you Lord for grace to walk in a new way I thank you Lord for grace to live out a new pathway in Jesus name and even as they take that ground Lord I ask for courage of conviction, Lord, to remain in that new place, Lord. And I thank you just for the absolute freedom, Lord, that they've desired. I thank you it's that you created us for freedom, Lord, and I thank you it's who you are. And so, Lord, I thank you for the, oh, he's just gracing you to be yourself, and that is totally free. And so I thank you, Lord, for that today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 As you were just praying, then I could, I kept seeing fresh faith, the faith of Jesus oh, inside of each one, one, just freshly dispensing into hearts. Just, I, and so I just decree that right now in agreement for each one of you, that fresh supernatural faith of Jesus that has been given to you. Yes. Remember that faith is a person, right? It's the person of Christ living inside yeah. of each one of us. I can see him dispensing that capacity to believe afresh through you right now. To, to, he's resetting you into receive mode by grace to be able to receive the promises, to know that you know that you know that you are a child of God. You are absolutely loved. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. The mm -hmm. old has gone. The sin nature has gone. Hallelujah. Has gone. Holy Spirit. Spirit. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Very wonderful. Oh, a fresh light just dispensing, dispensing through you. I could see what, when you were praying as well there, Sarah, that the, the light was uh, enabling people to discern again. You know, truth so from lies, darkness wow. from light, where the enemy comes in. I could literally feel <laughs> strongholds breaking when you were praying, where, where people have been under confusion, where you guys, if any of you have been under confusion about what is truth. Um, you know, and where the enemy lies to us about our identity, he'll, he'll press on us and try to convince us that that stronghold that we're struggling with, that sin that we're struggling with is mm. us. And it's not, it's not who you are. Who, right. who, who, so fresh grace to turn around and look at the face of Jesus again inside of you, right? Christ inside of you and believe again. <laughs> Thank believe you. again. Love yeah, it. In Jesus' name. Amen. We agree. Oh my goodness, Sarah, thank you so much. So much. Your spirit is so full of life and power. The presence of God is so on your words. Oh, it's just wonderful. It's wonderful. And thank you for writing the book, you know, because obviously I realize it's decades of journey for you mm. that you've poured into this and so much experience. It's going to be transformational for people. Oh, Liz, thank yes. you so much. It really means a lot to me. Thank you. Really no, we're, so, we're so thankful and it's such an important time for it. So thank you for giving us your precious time today and being on with us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's just an absolute privilege. Oh, and thank you guys for joining us today. We pray that you have the most amazing week this week. It's going from glory to glory to glory, being transformed as you embrace the glorious Christ within and live in union with him in your experience and look forward to being with you again next week. God bless. Hi, if you really enjoyed today's show and you want to go deeper with Jesus and experience his love and his presence more than you ever have, then I have a present for you, a free gift. If you want to jump over to experiencinggodslove.com and just click on and sign up, then you will receive one of my teaching videos that I have created especially for you that will not only give you a few keys just very, very quickly that you can uh, utilize in your daily walk with the Lord, um, but also I'm going to take you there as well. So it's an activation. So yeah, so jump over to experiencinggodslove.com and you are gonna be so blessed.